Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International Level Chemistry Unit 2 for January 2021. This is the part 2 video. I'll put the link to the part 1 as well as the part 3 video below the description box. Let's begin with question 19. Question 19 says ethanol can be made in industry by the reaction of ethane with steam using phosphoric acid catalyst. This is the equation for that reaction and the enthalpy change is negative 45 kilojoules per mole. They say the reaction is carried out at 300 degrees Celsius and 60 atmospheres. An initial yield of 5% is achieved when the ethane and steam first pass through the reactor. They want you to explain the chemical reasons for the conditions used and why such a low yield is acceptable in the industry. We need to look at the conditions that have been used. We can see here the temperature is 300 degrees Celsius the pressure is 60 atmospheres. Both the temperature and the pressure are really high, but the yield is quite low, which is just 5%. And also we need to consider that this reaction is reversible. So I say, carrying out the reaction at high temperature increases the number of particles with energy equal to or greater than activation energy. That is correct. When you carry out a reaction at a higher temperature, you're gonna have a higher rate of reaction. So it means more particles will have energy equal to or greater than activation energy. I also said using a catalyst creates a new pathway with lower activation energy so more particles can have the energy required to react. Then I went on to say that since this is an equilibrium reaction with an exothermic forward reaction, high temperature will shift equilibrium to the left, reducing the yield. So actually the key thing is Temperature increases the rate of reaction. However, because the forward reaction is exothermic, increasing the temperature causes equilibrium to shift to the left, producing more ethane or producing lower ethanol. So that is going to be a disadvantage in terms of yield, but it's an advantage in terms of rate. So choosing to work at 300 degrees is due to the compromise between the rate and the yield. Using a high pressure of 60 atmospheres is done to drive equilibrium to the product side with fewer moles, or here you could say fewer molecules, fewer molecules of gas. Finally, I say the low yield is acceptable because unreacted reactants can be recycled by passing them through the reactor again to allow them time to react. So the key thing here to summarize everything, we use a higher temperature because a higher temperature increases the rate of reaction. However, because the forward reaction is exothermic, a higher temperature shifts equilibrium to the left, leading to a lower yield of that. A higher pressure of 60 atmospheres is used because the product side has fewer molecules of gas and a higher pressure causes equilibrium to shift to the product side, increasing the yield of that. And then because this is a reversible reaction, of course, there is going to be a lower yield that is acceptable because we can still recycle the unreacted reactants in order to get them as product or to get them to react in order to get the products. So we can continue to the next part. Here they say the product of the reaction is a mixture of ethanol and water. They want you to explain why ethanol and water mix together fully. We need to look at ethanol. This is an example here, hydroethanol. You can see ethanol. Ethanol can form intermolecular hydrogen bonds. It can form London forces as well as permanent dipoles. We also look at a water molecule it can form the same type of bonding. So the, they mix really well because they have the capability to form intermolecular hydrogen bonds. So here I said, both ethanol and water have hydrogen bonds between their molecules. And when they are put together, there is formation of intermolecular hydrogen bonds between the partially negative oxygen and the partially positive hydrogen atom. So that is why they mix together fully well. The next part says ethanol can be oxidized using a solution of acidified potassium dichromate, 6, as you can see there. Then they say ethanoic acid and another organic compound Y are both passable products. They want you to draw the structure of Y. If you mix ethanol with acidified potassium dichromate, of course you're going to produce ethanoic acid, but there is a possibility of production of an aldehyde. So the other product should be, or the other compound should be an aldehyde, which is going to be ethanol. Next day says state the conditions needed to maximize the yield of each product. Now, to maximize the yield of ethanoic acid, you need to heat under the flux. And to maximize the yield of ethanol, you will need to distill in order to get the product really fast before it's fully oxidized into ethanoic acid. So here I said for the product Y, which is that, you need to distill Y from the reaction mixture. And uh, for the carboxylic acid or ethanoic acid, you need to heat under the flux. 
So this brings us to the end of question 19. Let's continue to question 20. Question 20. A compound DMAA was originally synthesized as a decongestant. So this is the structure of DMAA. They say a suggested synthetic road for DMAA is shown. So we begin with an alcohol. We go through a halogen or alkane and finally into an amine. So here they ask, give the systematic name of compound A. To know this systematic name, I need to, I position the carbons here so that we can see which one is the longest chain. And as we can see, this one here is going to be the longest chain because the functional group is attached directly to the carbons within that chain. So meaning, this is going to be carbon, carbon one, that is carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, five, and six. So because there are six carbons, it's going to be a hexano, but because OH is on carbon number two, it's hexan 2O. Now, we have a side chain, which is a methyl on carbon four, so the name comes out to be 4-methyl-hexan-2O. That is the name. The next part says, identify by name or formula, a suitable reagent for step one. Because step one involves converting an alcohol into a halogen or alkane, uh, we can use PCl5, phosphorus pentachloride. Here we have give the mechanism for the reaction in step two and include Kali arrows and any relevant dipoles. Here we begin by looking at the halogen or alkane. We can see in step two that an amine forms as a product, so I need to introduce ammonia. So this ammonia comes because there is a lone pair on nitrogen there is a carbon and a chlorine here, so this carbon is partially positive, while this chlorine is partially negative. This lone pair is going to be donated to the partially positive carbon, and then that bond breaks away, taking the electrons to chlorine, making it chloride, and we have this intermediate here. And then here we can see this bond is going to break as electrons in this bond are returned to the nitrogen to form a lone pair, and that hydrogen goes away, forming this final product. This is in the textbook, page 268. To about 269. So B, DMAA is only slightly soluble in water but dissolves readily in hydrochloric acid to form an aqueous solution. So this is DMAA and here this is HCl. A reaction is going to occur between these two because you can see this nitrogen has a lone pair. That lone pair is going to be donated to this hydrogen and the Cl is going to break away producing that and that. So here they want you to explain the type of bonding that occurs between the nitrogen atom and the hydrogen ion when the positive ion forms. This is going to be a dative covalent bond, which is the one you see here. So this is a dative covalent bond formed between the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom when it's donated to an empty orbital of a hydrogen ion. So that is what forms. So lastly here, they say complete the diagrams to show how the ions formed in the reaction between DMAA and hydrochloric acid interact with water molecules. We have the positive ion and the negative ion, and since water is polar, the oxygen atom of water is going to be partially negative, while the hydrogens are going to be partially positive. So the partially negative oxygen is going to be closer to the positive ion, as you can see here. So I drew about four. Please do draw at least more than two. So I drew four surrounding the positive ion, and you can see it's the oxygens that are partially negative that are closer to the positive ion. And on the other side, it's the hydrogens that are partially positive that I draw closer to the negative ion. So this brings us to the end of question 20 as well as the end to this part of the video. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.